Welcome to the practice of Ashtanga Yoga. I'm David Swenson. The demonstration you've just observed is meant to convey some of the varying facets of Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga, though from all appearances, looks like something to do just with the physical body, ultimately is very subtle. And it connects the inner world with the outer world, the subtle self and the physical being. This is done through the avenue of breath. It's the full deep breathing that makes this yoga. Otherwise, it's simply gymnastics or stretching. Really, yoga has nothing to do with physical ability. If it was only about physical ability, then the gymnasts or the dancers would be the greatest yogis in the world. But yoga is about challenging our ability not just a physical ability, but our ability to relate to the world around us and to discover the world within us. This is done through the breathing. Let's imagine for a moment that we have two types of people. Let's say that one is quite flexible and can easily move into a yoga posture, but without focus or intent. Maybe they can even dream about what they might be having for dinner that evening. Let's say another person who has inherently stiff muscles. All that means is their tendons are short or the muscles themselves are short. They can only reach this far. But they're breathing with focus and intent. This person is actually doing yoga. So, once again, the breath is the main focal point in the practice of Ashtanga Yoga. Let's talk about the breath for a moment. The breathing that we use in Ashtanga Yoga is called Ujjayi breath. Ujjayi means sound breathing. So that rather than creating a sniffle sound in the nose, something like we want to create a deep, full, resonant sound in the back of the throat. It sounds something like this. With practice, you'll experience the sensation that the breath is moving in through the throat. Now the way that this is achieved is drawing the air in the nose, letting it swirl in the back of the throat first as it enters the lungs. Then you assist the inhales by expanding the rib cage, lifting with the intercostal muscles. As you exhale, you contract the lower abdomen, assisting the air to exit the lungs and then maintaining the abdomen in a still position as you once again inhale. Now, if you're having a hard time achieving that sound, the ujjayi sound, let's try this. If as you exhale, exhale through your mouth and then close the mouth, let the air come out the nose and feel it swirl in the back of the throat, something like this. So you would inhale and then the next phase would be to, after you feel that sensation in the back of the throat on the exhale, would be to maintain it on the inhale. That's the ujjayi breath. Now, as we're breathing, the abdomen should remain still. Some systems of yoga will teach that the abdomen should move in and out as we breathe. In Ashtanga yoga, the abdomen remains still because we're utilizing locks in the body. This does not mean that one system is right and the other is wrong. It simply means that they're different. It's a different approach, and they both have their application within each, within each system. So, the first lock we want to talk about is Mula Bandha. Mula means root lock. It's at the very base of our nervous system. Right near the base of the spine, actually the seat of Mula Bandha is the perineum muscle. The perineum is in front of the anus, behind the genitals. Mula Bandha is a lifting of that muscle and drawing the energy up. Now, if you're not familiar with the perineum muscle, as many of us are not, then let's, let's explore another way to, to think of this. 
If you engage the whole pubococcygeal group of muscles, which are the muscles you'll engage if you have a need for a toilet and there are none in sight, you would engage those muscles and lift. That's even contracting the anus. Now, that's much more than you need to contract, but you will also be engaging the perineum muscle. So in the beginning, that might be a way to approach it and refining it over, try, over time, trying to isolate the perineum muscle. The second lock we'll deal with is called Uddiyana Bandha. Uddiyana Bandha is two inches below the navel. This is the muscle that will help to hold the abdominal region still when we breathe. As we inhale, this area is drawn back. If you imagine a thread tied to the front of your belly and then pulled back and wrapped around the spine so that you pull the abdomen back this way. Then you inhale, lifting the lungs and the ribs and exhaling, maintaining a stillness here. You don't want to over contract so that you restrict the breath. It's quite subtle really. Now I'm going to engage both of those locks and take a couple of breaths so that you can see what it looks like. That's the ujjayi breath and the locks engaged. Now another facet of Ashtanga Yoga is heat. If you're using the locks and you're using that breath, you'll main, you'll, you will gain a deep heat in the body. This heat acts as a fever. It burns toxins and impurities. It melts the muscles and brings them into a malleable state. It also cleanses the nervous system. So we have Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, and this deep heat, as well as the full ujjayi breathing. I'm going to emphasize the breath again and again. If nothing else, just keep the focus on the breathing because that is really what makes this yoga. So I'm going to give you various options now. We'll move right through the sun salutations later in the practice, but this is meant to give you some options which you can refer to later. We start with the feet together. And with an inhale, the arms come up over the head. And then we exhale and fold forward, lowering the head. Inhaling, look up. Now let's say in that first part, when we came forward, you didn't reach the floor. That's perfectly fine. You would have just taken the hands to the legs and then lifted the head with the hands still on the legs. Either way, the next phase is taking the feet back. And it would look like this. First option I like to call floating, which is floating the feet back to this position. The second option, if floating is not happening just yet, is called jumping, which would be a slight bending of the knees so you can take the palms flat into the floor, jumping the feet back, and then lowering. That jumping method may also be too much in the beginning. So, we have a stepping method. You can step with one foot and the other foot and then lower. You may find that stepping is okay, but when you try to lower, it's too much to do it slowly. If that's true, then take the knees down first and then the chest. Choose one of those methods and then we would come to this position ready for the upward dog. You keep the legs strong, the heels pointing up at the sky. Eventually, you would be hovering on the floor here. If that's not possible, you come all the way down on the floor, that's fine. But do keep the legs engaged as we move forward and lift to the upward facing dog position. The legs must be strong and pulling through the upper back and opening the heart to avoid collapsing in the lower back. If you lift and you find your shoulders coming up and your hips dropping down, you may find that this will cause lower back pain. It's much better to keep the legs strong, lifting, rolling the shoulders back, and opening the heart. Move into this over time. It might be too much in the beginning. In the beginning, maybe you won't lift quite so high. Or if you do, you may have to keep the legs down but do not sink in the lower back. 
Keep the legs strong and lift the heart as much as possible and come down. Now, from the upward facing dog position, we move to the downward facing dog position. You can either keep the arms straight and press back, or if you would like to have a bit more of a challenge, you would dip down this way and then move back. In this position, we would stay for five breaths. If while you're in the downward dog position, you become fatigued, you could just come down to your knees and hands and sit back, waiting in this position until it was time to come forward again. You would straighten your legs to the downward dog position. And the way that we come forward, we have similar choices to the way we went back. The first, again, I like to call floating which is using a slow, controlled method of taking the feet forward. Now that may be too difficult in the beginning, so we have an option of jumping, which is jumping the feet, bent knees, then straightening the legs and looking up with an inhale. If jumping is too much, then we have the choice of walking, stepping one foot, the other foot, straightening the legs, and looking up. Some of you will be pleased to know that we also have a fourth choice, which is jogging. Running the feet forward to the hands, straightening the legs and looking up. Then exhaling, leaning forward. Inhaling, standing all the way up until the hands touch. And exhale, arms to the sides. I'm going now to move through the whole first sun salutation so you can see it in an unbroken sequence. It looks like this. Inhale with the arms up. Remember your choices. You would exhale forward. Even you might have to bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your feet back in whichever method is appropriate and lower. Inhale, keep the legs strong as you lift. Exhale, pressing back. If you wish to dip down, that's fine. We would stay here for five breaths. I'm not going to stay for five now, but in the practice we will stay for five breaths. Then you continue forward in whatever method feels appropriate for you and look up with an inhale. Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, stand all the way up. You'd look up at your hands. The lungs are full. Exhale, arms to the sides. Now the second one looks much like the first but we begin with bent knees. This is Surya Namaskara B. As the knees bend, we inhale and the arms come up. As you exhale, the legs straighten and we lower the head. Now it continues just like the first one with an inhale looking up. With an exhale, the feet going back and we lower. Inhaling upward dog. Exhaling downward dog. Now, instead of holding here for five, we pivot with the left foot, have a big step with the right foot, taking the arms up over the head, the full breath, then exhale, lowering all the way down to the floor. Now, let's cover that stepping part again, because for some of you, that may be too much to step all the way the first time. You would pivot the left foot, Take the right foot as far forward as you can. If it doesn't reach the, reach the feet, that's fine. Then from here you would stand up, possibly even needing to step the foot forward. Or if you can take the foot forward, but it's still too much to stand directly up, you could put the hands on the knee to come up this way with an inhale and then lower. Remember, if you need to when you're coming down, you could take the knees down as well. Then, we have the second side, which is pivoting the right foot, stepping forward with the left, taking the arms up. Remember your choices to come up, the same as the other side. Exhaling all the way down, then inhaling, lifting up, exhaling all the way back. We would once again stay here for five breaths. In the downward dog position, the heels press toward the floor, the muscles above the knees, they're lifting and working. The chest moves back toward the feet. The top of the head moves toward the floor. And the entire palm 
presses right into the floor as the fingers spread wide. The breath remains full and deep for the five. Then we continue forward. Remember your choices to come forward and look up with an inhale, then exhale, lowering the head. Bend your knees, inhale, come all the way up with a full breath, the hands touch. Exhale, the legs straighten, and the arms come to the sides. Now I'll move through a complete Surya Namaskar B so you can see it in its entirety. It's like this. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, back. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Then the big step with the right foot. Remember the back foot's flat on the floor. That's an inhale. Exhale, you come down. Inhale, it's up. Exhale, back. And then you have the other side with the left foot coming forward and the arms up. And exhaling down and inhaling up and exhaling back. Once again, we would stay for five breaths here. On the sixth inhale, come forward, looking up. Exhale, lowering the head. Bending the knees, inhale, coming up. Exhale, legs straighten, arms to the sides. So remember those choices and the sun salutations later in the practice. Now, let's sit down. And we're going to explore another aspect of Ashtanga Yoga. This is the vinyasa. Vinyasa is the word describing the connecting movement of Ashtanga Yoga. Each pose is woven to the next through a series of movement and breath. It looks something like this. This is the first option, which is also a floating option. You're riding the breath. And then lifting up and moving back. And coming all the way through to a sitting position. Now, that takes some time to achieve with that flowing nature. But it doesn't mean that you can't do it, because everything in Ashtanga Yoga can be adjusted to anyone's needs. So we have this other option to learn the jumping facet. Taking the hands in front, lean forward, take the weight over the hands, and with an exhale, jump the feet back. Then moving through your sequence, upward dog, downward dog, remembering your choices to come through. You might jump or jog whatever it takes to come on through. Now there is another option, a third option. This is something I've devised which is called take it up asana. And what this is, is a lifting of the body while breathing and coming down. Because if we choose this method of jumping back, you don't actually engage the locks in the abdomen. And this is where we gain the lift and the lightness from in Ashtanga Yoga, is from lifting these locks. So, to explore those, let's try take it up asana. The hands come down to the floor. First thing is just to lift the backside off the floor. Then, make the effort to take the knees up toward the chest and breathe, come down. Just one breath, inhale, exhale, and down. Now, even if you do not achieve liftoff, let's say you've lifted there and you try to take the knees up, but your feet aren't leaving the floor. Don't jump like this. Just make the effort to lift so that you feel it here. That's the focus you want to feel right there. Even if you don't get up, make the effort. Some of you out there are looking and thinking, well, David, that looks like great fun, but you know, my arms are just far too short. They don't really reach the floor. Well, I could say the same about my arms. They're straight but I'm still on the floor. So we have two options. We either have to lengthen the arms or shorten the midsection. And what do you have to do to shorten the midsection? You have to lift and engage the locks and contract the abdominal region. And that's what we need to do. That's the focus. Choose one of those three. Now there is a fourth option also. And this is the option of waiting. If you choose not to jump or not to 
lean forward and shoot the legs back, or not to do take it up asana, then you could wait for the next posture, or choose a combination. Maybe sometimes you jump, sometimes you have to wait, eventually working toward a time that you can do all of the jumps. If you choose to wait, focus on the breath. Keep the breath full and deep. Remember, it's a breathing exercise. Stay with the breath. Keep it full. That will also maintain the heat so that when you choose to come back in, the body will not have cooled down. So, remember all of these options when we begin to move into the program. In your daily practice, you should fast forward the tape up to this point to begin. You'll notice throughout the practice that I'm utilizing five counts within each posture. That's just what it should represent, five counts. It may be more or less than five of your breaths, but stay with the counts. Also, you may find that the sun salutations in the beginning feel a bit rushed, but actually with time and practice, you'll find that it becomes more fluid and you'll easily move through them. All right, we've covered the basic foundations of Ashtanga Yoga, and we're now ready to begin the practice. Before we start the sun salutations, take your feet together and distribute the weight evenly across each foot. Keep the legs active, the kneecaps lifting. Drop the sit bones slightly. Keep the spine nice and long. Roll your shoulders down the back. Extend the arms long toward the floor. Lift the neck all the way through the top of your head. Find your breath. Stay with a full, deep breathing throughout the practice. Don't sacrifice the breath for a posture. It's better to remain with the breathing and follow that. Let the breath be your guide. Remember all of your options in the sun salutations. And we're now ready to begin. Move as far through the practice as is appropriate. Build the practice over time. And we're now ready. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, both arms up with a full breath. Look up at your hands. Exhale, fold forward, lower your head. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your feet back, lower, remember your options. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. And full deep breathing. Remember, your feet should be about six inches apart. The entire palm pressing into the floor. We're going to stay here for five counts. That should already be about two. Keep the spine long. Move the top of your head toward the floor. The heels move toward the floor, and your chest moves toward your feet. All right, that's four. Strong breathing. And five. Now as you inhale, take your feet forward, straighten your legs, and look up. Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, both arms up, full breath, the hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides. And we'll continue right into the next one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, take the feet back, lower all the way down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Strong, deep breathing. Remember, keep the fingers spread wide the palms pressing down. Move the top of your head toward the floor as your chest moves toward the feet. 